Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So today I just want to take and bring you all along for a little bit of my uh, life. I am going to be continuing videos here very soon. In fact, I've got one video coming up and I don't see poor planning on my part. Uh, give me one second. I have a video coming up here soon. It's going to be making these wolf jaw tongs. So everybody go to check that out. Uh, I'll put a link in the description whenever that video is uploaded if you're watching this in the future versus tomorrow essentially when this video is uploaded. Um, and then there will also be a tab to it for in the future. But these little wolf jaw beauties, I'm really liking these. These work really great. Uh, so uh, I plan on bringing everybody along for the ride and showing everybody how to take and make those. And I've got a few other little videos that are coming up here soon. Different things, just all sorts of different things that I want to do. But, so today, I was going to show you, I got out the white, you know, Michael Gla Jackson gloves here. Uh, just taking to show you guys a little bit about what I do for a living and uh, life. As you can see, that's pretty reflective. Got the camera there, that's kind of funny. But, uh, anyways... So this right here is in my first stage of polishing. So I still got a little while to go yet on it. Um, you know, this is the first stage of polish. There's two additional stages that it has to take and go through to take and get up to its final uh, buffed out finish. And uh, that, you know, that way I can ship it to the customer. But this here right here is my, this right here is a copper baptismal basin that I sell. And, uh, you know, so far I've been actually been doing pretty good on those. I've sold quite a few of them to uh, my customers over um, a period of time. And so, yeah, you know, I'm pretty happy about that. Uh, there's a lot of work in a piece like this. And so I guess one of the things, you know, before I go in the time lapse, we work in here uh, that I want to take a talk about is don't be afraid to explore uh, working outside your comfort zone, going a little bigger. You know, uh, my standard bowl sizes, the up until doing basins and things of that nature were about 12 inches in diameter and that was kind of always comfortable to work with and as this takes a lot more material this starts as a 21 21 inch diameter circle plate and this is eighth inch thick copper it starts at that and then it gets raised up right now this is sitting at 18 inches in diameter uh, you know with the door shutting on me here uh, it's 18 inches in diameter and it's about six inches deep and it, you know this whole sheet gets raised up and turned into this bowl here so you know don't be afraid you never know uh, don't turn down jobs just based upon you just don't know if you can do them it's a great mental stretch it's a great stretching game to kind of propel you forward at your own abilities and things and you know in the worst case scenario you know once again don't spend the people's money you, you know, if you can't get the job done, uh, you know, keep it in a little side envelope or an account or something until you get the thing uh, accomplished and, you know, and see how it works and constantly work with your customer on that deadline and, wh and what you're needing out of it. Uh, you know, you're going to lose some and you're going to win a lot. And, and that's just kind of part of business, especially when you're trying to progress as an artist and as a smith. And, you know, that's just really with any medium or anything like that. So, uh, so without further ado, I'm going to go into a little time lapse. I'm going to just kind of show you guys some different angles about what I do. Uh, you know, these things are really tricky to get on the buffer and buff. So, you know, I'll just go into this little bit of a time lapse here. You know, maybe talk you guys through it, what, what my thought processes are and stuff. And, yeah, we'll see how the rest of the video goes. So, I hope you guys enjoy. And thank you all for watching. Okie doke. First things first, let's go ahead and, and get all suited up here. So you're going to see I put on quite a bit of safety gear, and that is to protect myself from all the copper polishing compounds and dust that is super, super fine from getting all over my clothes and in my lungs and hair and all that good stuff. Now, I like to suit up really good. I know some guys kind of free willy nil this, but I don't like all that copper dust getting up in my lungs. So, and as you see here, I've got to get pretty close to this buffer wheel with that being in mind for this exact reason. For how much uh, 
space there is to actually work on this bowl, which there is not a lot of space in between the buffer uh, shank itself or the buffer wheel and the actual buffer housing. So it's quite a trick. This bowl size pretty much maxes out my buffer, the capabilities of my current buffer. So I really need to find some better tooling. But yeah, so I'm just continuing. If you see, it's starting, if you look at the reflection there, just right where the wheel's contacting, it's getting shinier and shinier and more and more reflective. That is what I'm going for. I'm going for an almost mirror finish. Now, one of the problems about mirror finishes is the fact of once you get it mirror finish, everything shows. Every little scratch, and I do mean every little thing shows once you get them up to full mirror finish. So I stop just a fuzz shy of completely mirror finish as to take and avoid this because there's just certain unavoidables in my shop right now about getting some scratches here and there that otherwise would just stick out like sore thumbs. Now that doesn't mean that I'm leaving really big scratches, but I'm talking about just even the scratches from my gloves going around with a little excess compound on my glove can leave scratches in the finish of the bowl. So I take it up to this almost near mirror finish and that's usually where I leave it. Now after this I have to acetone this bowl and I also have to protect it with some Rust-Oleum clear enamel. Now when I acetone it, it is to take and remove all the buffing compound. If I don't do that, what ends up happening is it darkens out and you can definitely see it and it doesn't look good. Okay, everybody. So there we are. We've got this thing all polished up to the second and the third stage of polishing slash buffing. This is what we got here. As you can see, it's a lot shinier. I don't know if the camera will really pick up on that or not. You know quite the reflection on it. That's what we're looking for on this here. Um, you know, so I think the customer is going to be well pleased with this baptismal basin. It's going to uh, do a good job at uh, baptizing some babies or whoever goes in this thing. I don't know. So anyways, uh, somebody commented that I look like a, uh, like a meth cook in, <laughs> in one of my last comment sections. Uh, safety is kind of one of those important things to take and have, especially when you're working with this kind of fine grit of co copper. Um, you know, one of the things I'd like to do a little bit better with safety is, as you can see, I was having quite the time to get this bowl on the buffer itself. Um, so if there's anybody out there that does a lot of surface finishing, maybe uh, like the car or the automotive industry, or things that you got to really polish out some big panels or surface, you know, clean up big panels on things like hoods or whatever. If you could give me some rep recommendations of some really good tooling, I'm not looking for cheap tooling. I'm looking for good professional quality tools that I can use, maybe handheld to do the same job instead of have to go to the buffer. As you can see, I had to get real close to it and up and close and personal with that wheel. I absolutely hate doing that. Um, but, you know, it's a subject of my business right now. I'm going to have to get this done until I can get some better tooling. Um, but anyway, so there's the result. I hope you guys enjoyed that little time lapse and all that good stuff. And, uh, yeah, so I'll be expecting some good videos to come in here soon. I'm looking forward to taking and producing them out there for you. And like I always say, God bless you, and we will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.